what's good everyone um this is another episode of community voices and we're excited to be chatting with the queen of glar and beauty influencer Imara de spain how are you doing today i'm doing well how are you doing good doing good thank you and you know um excited to have you on today and we wanted to just chat with you um you know you're about your social following um wanted to commend you you know just on your vulnerability and openness um through your platform and you know your approach to life and the things you care about and confidence really come through so um i think that you know you're on a journey of bravery and growth through your content and um just wanted to know where some of those characteristics kind of come from or how you build on them yeah um i feel like i have always been a very confident person like i feel like i've been say like an oversharer but like i always have had this like sense of who i am so strong inside of me and i feel like with my content if i could like pass along one message even beyond like education beauty wise it would be to like inspire other people to like find that same like confidence within themselves so that's like all that my content is centered around like education is always secondary to inspiring other people to be confident in themselves through beauty okay now that makes sense and i think it, you know it really comes through everything just you know it's authentic but like you said it starts entertaining but you also learn something and take something away from it too so exactly you know and i think uh with your TikTok, you know you get ready with me videos i think that approach is just really cool and um, of course, it ties into the beauty content, but can you take us through what kind of led to you starting that uh, content creation? Yeah, so I I started TikTok really during the pandemic, and I think that's when, like everybody else, and I feel like it just kind of popped off from there, and it kept growing, and it didn't really take off until I started doing Get Ready With Me's, and this was back when Get Ready With Me's weren't as popular as they are now. Now I feel like everybody does Get Ready With Me's, and <laughs> they've kind of like changed a little bit. Like back then, it was all about the comedy, and so I was like really heavily infusing comedy in my makeup videos because nobody else was really on TikTok merging comedy and beauty. Okay. So I was like, focused on like, you know, like I'm a very, I, I love comedy. That's like my, one of my biggest things. And so it was like relaying that through beauty content, which was really fun to do. And it just kind of took off from there. Like all my get ready with me is for like, get ready with me to meet a sugar daddy, get ready with me to, I don't know. Like I always had like a crazy event, like a black tie charity thing. So I'm like, I might as well film and get ready with me. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I think it makes it feel more organic, especially, uh, you know, yeah um building that community and stuff and um I guess like how do you feel about the community that you built um through your platform oh my god I love them so much they are literally like my best friends on this earth they are the cunty barbies I don't know if we can say that but yeah. they uh, I just I love them so much like honestly when I first started TikTok it took a while to build up to the point where now I don't receive hate comments all the time. Like at the very beginning, I was getting hate comments. And now I feel like everyone knows that if you leave a hate comment, the cunty Barbies will come after you. So nobody leaves a hate comment on my stuff anymore. It's just like all love and support, which I think is so awesome. And as a creator, that's like all you can ask for, you know? Oh yeah, no, I think that's really important, especially to have, you know, uh, genuine support and, you know, build that community is good. It's all, po you know, all positive love and everybody can kind of grow together. Yes, so. yes. it's all about the like positivity, the confidence. That's like kind of what my entire platform is built on. Good, you know, and it's good to have people be able to relate to you in that way as well. So, you know, everybody can feel good, come out of feeling good out of the content, so. Yeah. Um, and, you know, um, going into your um, experience as a model and a beauty influencer a little bit, like, what has that journey been to break into the industry? And I guess, like, what's been the most rewarding part about it um, as you've been leaving your mark? Interesting. Okay. I think that the most rewarding part is definitely the community that I've built, like, being stopped on the street and having, like, country Barbies come up to me anywhere in New York City, like, at a restaurant, like I'm like walking to the train, like anywhere, like they, they will come up to me. And I think that's the most rewarding part of this job is knowing that there are like, when you see it online, it's different than like an actual person coming up to you being like, thank you, you've inspired me. 
I love your content. I'm proud of you. Like that is so much more special to me. Um, but breaking into the industry, it's been interesting because I feel like I'm not really perceived as like a model, like a traditional model because influencer was before a model. Yeah. So it's been an interesting journey to like manage the two and like balance, like which title I am. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but it's cool. It's like, I want to walk a lot more runway, which I'm excited about. And that's a very short term goal of mine. So we'll see. Okay. Hey, well, can't wait to see you do it. Cause it seems like you've been on the right tracks, but you, you know, just making your dreams happen. And you have the support. So I think it's going to be exciting seeing what you do next. Yeah. And, um, you know, also, um, you know, being, having that community and being kind of like a, a face of the um, industry and stuff, especially an influencer. Um, I think like resources are important and we're making a donation to um, organization important to you, um, the Trans uh, Lifeline org, org. And I think that their message and goal of providing peer support to the community is very really important. Um, with that being said, um, how, how important is it having resources and support um, and, you know, in the community and having orgs like this? Yeah, you know, I am very privileged. I, you know, have not had a traditional trans experience and I have done my research and know that the, like the experience that I have is not something that a lot of trans people have and the support and community that I have with my family and my friends and in my life is not something that a lot of trans people have. So working with Trans Lifeline, it's like, amazing because not only are they run by trans individuals but like they do so many different things across the board of like um like peer support within the community but then also like advocating in like various different um like avenues to like you know help trans people mm -hmm. um which is very important especially now more than ever so yeah oh, okay no, that, that's very cool. And it's good to know that there's resources like that, you know, for the community, because I think that's important, like you said. Um, and, you know, you hit on something um, that I think is important. And, um, you know, like, what is the value of having um, organizations or more organizations run by actual members of the trans community, you know, versus just allies that support? I think it's a good idea to have a mix of the two because I feel like with one or the other, it kind of will always skew in a certain direction. But I think it's important to have members of the community in the organizations that are advocating on their behalf because those are the people that you're representing. And like, how are you going to know exactly what it is that they want and need in their life without being a part of the community? I mean, you can guess and you can assume and like do your research and figure it out, but it's yeah. always best to have at least some first-hand experience in that sense so yeah oh, okay no I think that makes sense I think a balance of the two sounds important and you know it is that way you can bring those authentic experiences in so yeah. very yeah. cool well yeah no thank you on that and um you know getting back to your career a little bit um and um what challenges have you like faced so far and have you kind of got through those a lot of challenges that I've faced have been with kind of fighting my own imposter syndrome in certain scenarios. Like you feel like, oh, am I worthy enough to be here? Is this the space that I, you know, like feel the most comfortable in? It's like, not only am I trans, I'm biracial and um, I'm half black, half white. And like being in these spaces with predominantly cis white female creators, I, I feel like there is a lot of, um, like competition or just like this, this feeling of like uncertainty within the, the influencer world. Yeah. So battling that on my own and like figuring out how to best, um, I guess, show up in a way that I will not feel not confident, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, no. And, right. And I feel like that's been something that I'm working on this year and it's been really cool. Um, Another challenge that I've faced, let me think for a second. Yeah. Hmm. I guess like one of my bigger challenges is kind of growing my social platform without having to bring my trans identity too far into it. So I don't talk about being trans a lot online, like beauty and confidence are like pretty much all that I talk about. Okay. And um, I feel like I 
want to grow my platform and like keep building the cunty barbies but at the same time i feel like there are a lot of creators who like leverage their identity in order to gain the followers and i don't want to be like that like yeah. i feel like that's a little gimmicky and a little like shady so i'm like i would rather build my audience in a certain way while still talking about it in an authentic way so that's like another challenge that i'm like learning to balance the two Okay. No, that makes sense. I think it kind of ties into the first challenge as well. You know, I think especially being a creator and a creative too, you know, um, your stuff is yeah. really creative and it's expressing yourself. And I think the biggest thing is, like you said, to stay authentic to yourself and that message because that's what's setting you apart in the first place. So, you know, I think it's easy to get lost in the noise of, or to shuffle everything. So staying grounded is always yeah. good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's cool though. I'm excited to see, you know, what kind of comes out more this year. Um, and you know, um, I think with content and like just having um, your own authentic voice and stuff, especially in the shuffle of everything, um, I feel like you have a unique perspective on with this month being Women's History Month. Um, like what does this month mean to you? And kind of like, how can we all be better advocates, not only um, advocates, but also allies, you know, with people in the community? Women's History Month means so much to me because it's such a privilege to be a part of Women's History Month as a trans woman. Like, I feel like a lot of times they're left out of the equation or left out of the conversation. So it's um, it's a step in the right direction to, like, kind of be in the same community and, like, grow together. Um, yeah, Women's History Month has always had, like, a very, you know, important part of my life because... You know, trans history, I feel like, is often grouped in the LGBTQ community, which is important and still should happen. But specifically, like, trans women history should also be explored in Women's History Month. So I think that's really cool. And what was the other half of the question was, how can we all be better advocates? Um, I think showing up and including trans people in the conversation around Women's History Month is already enough to be a better advocate for, you know, women in general. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Very cool. No, I think that's important. Like you said, representation matters. And I think just having diff not only different perspectives, but having um, that representation in the conversations is important, um, especially for us all to progress and be better allies. And, you know, just people to each other. I think it's all important. So, so true. Yeah. So thank you on that. And, you know, um, all being said, we talked a lot about, um, you know, content, um, the things that you're into. Um, what do you have coming up uh, for this year? Anything that you're excited or that we should be on the lookout for? Um, you know, I'm starting to get back into acting, which is really exciting. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, definitely more runway, more modeling, more campaign stuff. And I'm going to start my YouTube channel again, which is like one of my biggest goals for 2023. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, because I feel like it's really fun to bring the Cunty Barbies more into my world. And I feel like on TikTok and Instagram and stuff, it's just kind of like a little snippet. And mm -hmm. I want my YouTube to kind of be like the real inside scoop into my life. So yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> let's give them a day in the life. Exactly. <laughs> for sure. Oh, very cool. Well, you know, thank you so much for your time. Um, really appreciate the conversation and, you know, you just sharing your insight with us. So, um, you know, stay tuned for another episode of Community Voices and thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you.